Creative Brain Candy by Creators for Creators. What did you mean when you said all that stuff back at the Institute about extinction? I meant that... He meant what you said on the tour. That if things keep going the way they are, the humpbacks will disappear forever. Oh, that's not what he said, farm boy. Admiral, if we were to assume those whales are ours to do with as we pleased, we would be as guilty as those who caused, past tense, their extinction. I have a photographic memory. I see words. Are you sure it isn't time for a colorful metaphor? <sighs> You're not one of those guys from the military, are you? Trying to teach whales to retrieve torpedoes or some dipshit stuff like that? No, ma'am, no dipshit. Well, good. That's one thing I would have let you off right here. Gracie is pregnant. All right, who are you? And don't jerk me around anymore. I want to know how you know that. We can't tell you that. But, but if, if you let me finish, I can tell you that we're not in the military, and we intend no harm towards the whales. Then what do in you think? In fact, we may be able to help you in ways that, frankly, you couldn't possibly imagine. Or believe, I'll bet. Very likely. You're not exactly catching us at our best. That much is certain. I have a hunch that we'd all be a lot happier discussing this over dinner. What do you say? You guys like Italian? No. Yes. Yeah, no. no. Yes. No. Yes. I love Italian. And so do you. Yes. Everyone and welcome to Smoking and Drinking in Space. This is a sci-fi podcast from a couple guys who think they know sci-fi. And this week, we continue the summer of Star Trek as we get sauced and watch the movie that ended communism in the Soviet Union. It's one of James' favorite. It's 1986's Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. But first, he's the whale-loving doctor who will go to any lengths to stay with them, even snuggling up close to my man whore of an admiral. It's James. How are you doing, James? Yeah, double dumbass on both of you. <laughs> And he's the guy who strips down to his skivvies to hug whales. It's Rob. How are you doing, Rob? Uh, I'm so glad you did God. that. God, you're, you're such a dumbass. Uh, We're off to, to podcast soil. Yep. Starting low. We can only go down from here, right? That's sure, right. Sure. James, what's happening around CBC? Man, I'll tell you what. The big news this week around CBC, I mean, you know, we got all the great shows. We've got Drunkenomics. We got Simply Stokies. We've got uh, this thing that we put out every week. Rob still doesn't have a cooking show. We've got BGA. We got all kinds of stuff going on. But the big news is that we've got a brand new podcast on Creative uh, Brain Candy, and that's called Catobophobia. Catobophobia, you're going, what the hell is that? Well, it's a podcast Afraid between of powerlifting. And it's not what Catobophobia is. Will you shut up and let me do my bit? I don't. Inter- <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, I do. Yeah, you do. I do yeah, interrupt you. You do. Yeah, all the time. All the time. Yeah. Two power. And by the way, college- you left oh, out STD. Me. They're not on the network anymore. Two power no, they college are. students. They're not canceled. What? No, they, yeah. Well, I, not, I don't know what they're doing. They're just not around here anymore. Not they used to release on Thursdays. I don't know what's going on. It doesn't matter. Cause we're talking about Catobophobia. Two powerlifting college students and a powerlifting coach tackle the woes of the modern fitness world. To, uh, they talk about everything from lifting, competition, diet, uh, to the latest news. And you can expect to see it all on Cotobophobia with your host, Jimmy Kareem, and uh, the other Jimmy. There's like two Jimmies. You can never have enough Jimmies, right? You really can't. Jimmy Kirk, which is what he was called on an episode of uh, the original series, if you remember. But check it out, Cotobophobia, uh, creativebraincandy.com. I think, and- we sh- I think we should start calling you Jimmy Sattis. Let's not do that. And if you are indeed a creator and you need a platform, we're here to help. Uh, if you go to creativebraincandy.com and you click that apply button, whether it's podcast, blog, vlog, uh, cartoons, uh, doodles of Rob's uh, micro penis, whatever it is, we can help you uh, <laughs> Thanks, get Jamie. a platform. You're very welcome there, micro penis Rob. Uh, hit that apply button, creativebraincandy.com and catobophobia. Welcome to the shit show known as. Create a brain candy. 
No. No. No, no. Just that is, is the shit is the show. show. Yeah. Creative yeah. Brain Candy Jeez. is the legit organization that leave elevates Sadis. Yeah, I'd leave it to sure Jimmy that's... to be, like, totally <laughs> messed up. <laughs> Look, micro dick Rob, I'm not sure that that's accurate. That I have a micro dick? You're right. That is not accurate. <laughs> Not what All right, th- thanks, th- Jimmy th- Sattis. Uh, Robbie no, no, Sattis, no, what's going on? So <laughs> Do you have any news for us this week? I do. Um, let's start with um, let's start with crap. 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 Is it yeah, like crap? Shit or no? No, I'm just I'm just starting with crap because that's the headline of this particular article. It says crap. Uh, I reported, you know, way back when it seemed like forever ago. I don't wait, know wait, when wait, it was. Wait, 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 What do you mean you reported? I did. I read it <laughs> Are you a to journalist you guys. all of a sudden? Yes, I read it to you guys. Therefore, I reported it to all our <laughs> listeners. So you just read it. Like just, mm-hmm. okay, so say you read it. You didn't report it. You just I read did. it. I did. I reported it. That's not I how reported it to works. you. You didn't you realize not. that this had happened. I, anyway, you know so Ugh. we talked about the fact that the mole up on uh, Mars got stuck and they had to hit it with a hand, with a the, the arm. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, they, to get yeah. it unstick, right. unstuck. Yeah, they did the Armageddon thing. Yeah, yeah. They they hit another obstacle and it's stuck again. Did they hit it with a hammer again? Uh, no, actually, they're going to have to bury it. Um, apparently, you know, this Mars soil is way too loose and, uh, the mole can't do shit. And so it's gotten stuck again, can't create enough friction. So, and even with like pushing down on it with, uh, they've been pushing with the arm to like, you know, help it down. Um, can't create enough friction. So they need to fill the hole back up and, uh, behind the mole and, you know, hope that there's more friction there when they push down on it. So that's kind of funny. I don't think that's funny at all. It is. It's funny that this mole has like gotten stuck so many times. It's or funny that it's the mole a- can't dig. Yeah. <laughs> the mole can't dig. Oh my God. Yeah. All right. So how much, how much money did we spend on this mole to, to, to explore Mars? Look, I didn't go into those types of oh, uh, details. Oh, so you didn't actually do any reporting, any journalism. No, no I didn't do any research. It's a research free zone. Research free. <laughs> it's, yes. it's something Unless free. it's on it's a the podcast fly. podcast gold free zone, too. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, back in March is when they hit it with a, with a hammer or yeah, the shovel. No, I, yeah, yeah, no, I remember you reporting on it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, good. You do. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. What Just else you got? On. I'm, so a uh, U.S. Naval uh, Naval Academy professor um, has... Was he on nuclear vessels? <laughs> uh, he was. He was. All right. um, in one of his classes or one of his uh, talks, he um, argues for the single ship design that was seen in Star Trek Picard, uh, where you had all those ships that were all the same looking. Um, so apparently he's using... Uh, Star Trek as part of his uh, reasoning for single ship design in part of his um, talk. Those weren't all right. the same ships in Picard, though. Yes, right. they were. No, they weren't. There yeah, were it, two or three different uh, classes of ship in that fleet that Riker brought, according to the designers of the show. Okay. Hmm. Well, hmm. there you go. Hmm. Uh, can I also same just point basic out that, same basic ship though? Then I guess same is, basic ship design. Right, they're in space and space worthy would be yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can we can we just like look? Star Trek has forever been uh, the place where scientists and those the engineers look to for inspiration. I mean, let's just like we could go through like the microwave. We could we could we could talk about uh, Bluetooth. We could talk about the iPad. We could talk about a whole plethora of different things that have been inspired by Star Trek that we now have. Are you 20, sure the 30 years ago, the microwave was inspired by Star Trek. Yeah, it was. Uh, the uh, the let's just talk about like, the big big one that everyone uses anymore the the iPads, right? Thirty years ago, when Star Trek: Next Generation was around and they had their their personal pads, you remember those, right? Like Picard would pick one up and then he'd face palm every time Data said something about having sex with a woman. Like now we've got those. So, you know, we're going to, there's going to be 
uh, a, a space worthy vessel or wessel, as Chekhov would say, uh, sooner rather than later. It'll have two nacelles and we'll call it Enterprise because we are a simple people. Oh, wait, we already did that. What? It was called the space shuttle. Called yeah. Enterprise. Yeah, but it didn't have two nacelles, did it? No, it did. It didn't I look think like the, it. I think the two booster rockets that. Those weren't yeah. nacelles. Those are booster rockets, asshole. Yeah, well, well it's, my, it's, it's current day nacelles. Oh, my God. All right. You know, no, and if are, you say we are literally ten minutes into the show, and, and you know, if you say two nacelles really fast, it sounds like tuna cells. It has tuna cells. Tuna cells. Yes, I'm sure they took tuna up on the spaceship. Me too. Yeah. I don't know what's worth more worthless than dirt, but we're there. That's where we're at. What else you got, Rob? All right. Last thing here, um, in keeping with my uh, feud, I guess uh, with um, BGA. Um, I've got another game. <laughs> what what <laughs> another, feud do you have with BGA? I, uh, it's I in don't his know. Head. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all, all up here. here. It's what the all hell up is he here. Talking about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I scooped him last week about the whole um, uh, what was it? Fallout. Fallout yeah, series uh, right. coming out. Yeah, you yeah, scooped yeah. him. All right, you read yep. the report. The reporting mm-hmm. someone else did before they read the reporting someone else did. <laughs> yep. Yep. So I'm going to scoop him again in yeah, that uh, Paul W.S. Anderson is uh, creating Monster Hunter, uh, and it's uh, scheduled to come out in September, September 4th. Fingers crossed. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe not. Who knows? Paul um, W.S. Anderson. Okay. Okay. Never mind. It's not Wes Resident Anderson. Evil. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I was thinking Wes uh, Anderson. I was like, that's going to be a really fucked up movie. It's going to be yeah, a lot no, of... No. of Center shot, wide angle screens with monster hunters. I don't, I don't yeah. get that. A bunch of primary colors on the set, and yeah, is yeah. is the movie going to be as directionless and useless as the game is? Who knows? Maybe. Um, however, you know, it, it wouldn't be a Paul W. S. Anderson movie without Mila Jovovich. Mila Jovo- yes. Yeah, and she's in it. Can you not say Mila, Mila Jovovich? I was going to say it, Mila Jovovich. It didn't sound like you could. Uh, I was about to say it, and then Jason said it, and I just said yes, instead of like saying the name twice from two different people. Multi-pass. Shut the fuck up. Anyway. Multipass. Um, multi- multipass. Yeah, so. So hot. So, hot. so she's in it, uh, sporting a big-ass sword. Um, and. Is she not wearing a lot of clothes? No, she's got a decent amount of clothes. Well, at and least then I in, have zero interest in, the in watching pro, this. In the promo video uh, uh, shots here. Um, but I'm sure some of that will probably get ripped off or something like that when they're fighting a monster. Um, also, T.I. is in it, which is kind of funny. She but looks whatever. like Cloud. Yeah. She and does Ron, kind of look like Cloud. Yeah, yeah, when Cloud dressed up as a woman. Yeah, and Ron Perlman is also in it. No, I'm thinking right. she looks like Cloud when Cloud didn't dress up as a woman. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Stop. You're gonna you're gonna make me not want to have sex with Mia Jovovich. Is that possible? I no, at this okay. point, no, it's not. I, didn't I just so. wanted to say multi pass. Oh, I don't even care. Only only if she has red hair. <laughs> It'll take ten seconds, just say multi pass like three times and I'm good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big bada boom. <laughs> End it with that. Yes. <laughs> All right, what else you got? That's it. That's that was it. three. That was, okay, I, I didn't know if you may have Man. like you know overachieved this week and did four. <sighs> overachieve? Dude, have dude, you ever I, known him to overachieve? No. Any, All right, so you want four? There's a new sci-fi show, uh, sci-fi movie that just came out called Archive. It came out on Friday. Looks kind of interesting. Go take a look at it. You gonna tell That's, us anything about it? Or just no, nope. no. Nope. No, nope. just nope. interesting. His name is Archive. No, called, check it out. It's this it's is called, the kind of reporting we get. It's called this Archive. He actually does reporting. It this involves it. robots. Um, <laughs> it involves robots. Of, wow. It, it's kind of uh, reminiscent. It looks like of like uh, what was it? Replicant. Oh, so you it haven't actually like, seen it? No, I haven't you seen haven't, it. <laughs> have you watched a, uh, like a, a, a synopsis of it? it? Yeah, I, I read a synopsis. I looked at the trailer. It looks pretty good. It has right now a sixty-seven on Rotten Tomatoes with only fifteen. Uh, 15 um, reviews. You know what else? So only 15 had, uh, people have watched this. premise and looked pretty good and the trailers were really cool. Uh, Star Trek 4? No. <laughs> no. No, that, that Will Smith failure 
where he Gemini played. Man? No, on Netflix. Um, <laughs> oh fuck! Uh, what, what was that? After guy? Earth. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, that was, I know what that it was is. Shit too. I'm, I'm, I know what it is. I'm waiting for you to figure oh, it out. Fuck though. you. I, um, that, Wild Wild yeah. West. It was. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, one too. Men, Men in Black. What you're telling me, Rob, is that this 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 Shark new, Tale. Ar- what's the name of this stupid show you're talking about? Archive. Ar- archive. The archive. You're telling me that so, archive is so good that only 15 people have reviewed it on Rotten Tomatoes. It came out on Friday, and it's video. It's on demand type of deal. And Come out on. of those 15 people, only two thirds like it. Right. Okay. It looks interesting. Okay, shut up. Yeah. That's why I didn't go with it. The print, the 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 newsworthiness of that was pretty weak. But no, Jason had to uh, bring it up, I, and he still I hasn't figured out the bright. name of that movie. There bright. it is. Yeah, it is. How long did it take you to research that? Well, I'm just gonna be honest. Like the news segment as a whole hasn't really been all that strong. Hey, <laughs> the news segment as a whole is a lot better than the shit that you pour out about what's happening on CBC. How? Katobophobia, a brand new podcast, a new member of the podcast media cooperative uh, creative brain candy family. How is that week? It's not. It's big news, Rob. No, no. And yes, just yes. Because this you don't week, have anything this that week goes it was up big to news. that magnitude. Last that week, grandiose so big news of oh, new things stuff going is happening. On. Things are happening. I really don't care. Who's ready for STD a pod crawl? Canceled. Double dumbass on you, Rob. Uh, well. Damn. Let's do this. We can call it, I don't know, say a pod crawl. The pod crawl. Pod crawl. Pod crawl. Pod crawl. Excellent. Insert it deep. Pod crawl. Kind of like a space suppository full of information. The movie opens with a space tube racing toward Earth, screeching at anything that gets in its way. For those ships unfortunate enough to hear its banshee screams, they get all the life sucked out of them, and are left drifting in the void. Back at Vulcan, Spock is taking his SATs to graduate from Vulcan High School again, but the last question trips him up. His mom reassures him that she still loves her little boy even if he didn't get a perfect score on his test. Kirk and crew have decided to head back to Earth and face the music, but they are leaving Savik behind, because Spock has gotten all weird and clingy since they panfard and Kirk doesn't want the drama. As they head back in their pirated bird of prey, they are surprised when they don't see any patrols along the way. The comms channels are overloaded with buzz about a giant space dildo fucking Earth, and there's an emergency broadcast signal that warns everyone to stay away. Earth is where Kirk keeps all his stuff, so he prefers it not to be fucked. It seems the space shaft is looking for some humpbacks to hump, and won't stop serenading Earth until it can find a whale to swipe right on. But Earth hasn't had any humpbacks for a few hundred years. Kirk orders Spock to use his new brain to plot a course back to the past, so they can time travel back to the future with some horny humpbacks. Apparently all you need to do is fly really fast around the sun, and you can go back in time, take that Superman. They arrive in 1986 San Francisco, and land their cloaked ship in the middle of a park that nobody ever visits. The trip to the past has burned out their magic crystals, they need to find a couple of whales, and also make a big fish tank in the cargo hold. Kirk and Spock head to a local aquarium where there just happens to be two adult whales, one of which is knocked up. Their caretaker is a little miffed at the weirdos who are plotting to take her whales, but comes around when she fears after their release they will find themselves in perfume bottles. Chekhov and Uhura are taking a man on the street survey of where the best place to find nuclear vessels is, and Bones and Scott are creating a time paradox, securing some walls for their fish tank. Kirk turns on the charm and woos the whale doctor to tell them when their targets will be released and how to track them. Chekhov got captured trying to steal photons from the carrier Enterprise and has a traumatic brain injury that requires whale doc, Bones and Kirk to break him out of the hospital. Sulu has stolen a helicopter and is helping Scotty set up his awesome salt water aquarium. As they prep to leave, (laughs) the whale doc, infatuated at this point with the manhole, gives him a big hug as he's beaming aboard. Kirk says, fuck it and takes her with him to get the whales and head back to the future. After scaring the shit out of a whaling boat, they beam aboard the whales and make a trip around the sun again. Back in the 23rd century, they crash back in San Francisco Bay and release the whales, who then offer up their ass to their space dildo god. Satisfied, the space shaft leaves Earth and turns back on all the lights as it goes. 
Kirk and crew head to a Federation Council meeting where they are charged with doing a bunch of bad shit, and then subsequently acquitted after pleading guilty. All except Kirk. He's convicted of being Kirk, demoted to captain, and given a ship to command, ruining his life forever. Kirk and crew head out to their new assignment, teasing a command of the new Excelsior, but ultimately finding the new Enterprise A, and roll Kirk heading back to where no man has gone before, credits. All right. Hey. So wait, 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 wait. Don't bury the lead. Sorry. Who's the new hottie? Who's the new hottie reading shit? I just uh, trying out a, a new reader, uh, seeing how that, yeah. uh, seeing that, how, how that works out. Hey, baby. Yeah. Yeah. How you you like her? Yeah. Does she have pics? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sending you her pics. <laughs> ASL. ASL, baby. ASL. Yeah, ASL. ASL. Uh, no, on? because, you know. We almost got sued last time you stalked one you of like, our readers. Hey, you like, you hey, like the party? <laughs> what happens in Russia stays in Russia. Obviously not. All right. So we're on number four of the Star Trek movies. This is probably uh, one of the lightest movies that we've, we've well, it's definitely the lightest movie that we've seen yes. so far, um, which is a nice break uh, from the really heavy are you, and dark well, it's movies. Because most of it happened during the day. Most of the action happened during the day. Uh, I, I, Rob, on a plan. I cannot, not I cannot in stress space. this enough. Space how much is cold I and dark. Just like you. I got a level that I wasn't sure was possible until I've podcasted with you this long. I, You are not my favorite person. Hey, I feel the same. <laughs> <laughs> You're not your favorite person? No, he's not my favorite person. Oh, it's, oh, it's reciprocal. I appreciate the clarification. I was confused yeah, 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 yeah. for a moment and thought maybe yeah. you were self-loathing. No, no, you just... Uh, no, I'm pretty sure you are, but that's all right. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so I, this is one of my favorite Star Trek movies. Uh, it's just fun. I mean... It's, it's, it is fun. It, it's it a fun doesn't take ride itself, for 50%. Oh, my God, it does. It does not take and itself I, too seriously. Uh, it does. It does. For half the movie. And then the other half is fantastic. It's just this fun, stupid ride that literally makes no sense in certain places. Like, I, I, did you watch this sober or drunk? Because you're on like this bender right now. See, I so, thought uh, that too. Yeah. I, 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 was, I mean, it was 50-50 whether he was going to show up for today. I know, right? I, I wasn't we sure were, we were going to have a pod crawl. We were very prepared to do a two-man show. Yeah. Rob and I had discussed it beforehand. We were We were good to go without you. Oh, well, let's, let's make that a regular thing. <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> you still have to edit it, though. Yeah, Fuck you still got to edit it and do the pod crawl. <laughs> nope, nope, you got to edit it. Insert the pod crawl. No, oh, I was laughing in there. Half sober whenever I watch this. Okay, well, that makes sense, because yeah, this half movie sober. is dumb. Which, which, which way, uh, half sober? Were you on the coming coming off? Or no, I was going in. Ramping up. I was ramping okay. up. Okay, yeah. yeah. So by the end of the movie, okay. you're like, fuck it, world, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this movie's dumb. It's, let's just start with the premise of the movie. The premise of the movie is, because man is bad and has hunted the humpback whale to extinction... That suddenly there is a probe like 300 years in the future from some unknown place hundreds of light years away. They don't know where it is. They don't know why it's coming. I have no idea. It's there to talk to the whales. So that begs uh, the question, who sent it? Why did they send it? And then like, what was its purpose? Does, like, what? does it seem, does it seem really familiar to something we watched? It does. I'm trying ago? to remember. Yeah. V'ger. Except v that v they actually explained what it was. This, v they never did. They never said, hey, there's an alien humpback race that populated humpback whales throughout the universe. And Earth was one of, no, it was none of that, which is far-fetched to begin with. But there was just, nah, just fuck it. There's just this dildo in space, which is what it looks like. It looks like a fucking, I don't even know, California roll or a fucking, I don't even know. It's just stupid, wet cylindrical dildo with a fucking little ball that comes out the end. It's like stupid. And it it's there to talk to the whales, but we never find out why we never find out what the whales say back. We never find out who this alien race. No, there's nothing. It's just stupid. The premise is dumb. 
And it's also recycled from the uh, motion picture. Kind of, yeah. Okay. As long as we're all on the same page <laughs> and we start there, I think we can move forward with why this movie is half good and half bad. I Yeah, I'll agree. They didn't explain, you know, where the probe came from, why it was there, or where it went afterward. Yeah, I'll, just the I'll, ball I'll went inside of it? The that ball went just, up inside of it like it does with Rob? Maybe Whenever it, he sees a woman? Maybe it just got <laughs> cold. I don't know. It got cold. And then it went away. And everybody was happy. In fact, Spock laughed. Spock was laughing. That's how happy he was. Because that happens a lot for Spock. He's exploring his newly found human side. If you remember correctly from an episode, uh, the uh, original series, if he laughs or shows emotion, it will kill him. It will not kill him. It, it will if, he do, if it does too much. But they were having so much fun that they were frolicking in the water of the, uh, the bay, the San Francisco Bay. Yes. Well, or a, a, a swimming pool on the Paramount parking lot, but one or the other. One or the other. Yeah, whatever. They were frolicking. There was frolic being had, sir. And it was a it was a fun way to end that scene, I thought. It was Sure. No, yeah. No. This was I, a yeah. fun, lighthearted movie and uh, one that I just yeah. I like. Especially it's after not two perfect. Don't get me wrong. It is, far from no, it is not perfect. And it is all. not my favorite <laughs> Star Trek film. I will say this. I think it's I mean we'll get to this later. I'm sure somebody will ask, but I, it's better than three and it's better than five. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it's still pretty weak overall compared to what we've watched. So, like, even to, compared to what we've three, it's pretty weak. It's very weak on the premise, on <laughs> some of the things that happen in the movie just don't make any sense whatsoever. Like what? It's just. Okay. So. <laughs> Uh, as as they're they're uh, coming back from the hospital, right? Uh huh. They get beamed not onto the ship, but they get beamed outside of the ship, and then the ramp comes down, which doesn't make any sense to begin with. And then Chekhov and Scotty and and Bones and whoever else was there, Sulu was helping them in. They all go in, and the only two that stay outside are Kirk and the mom from seventh heaven. Right. And, okay. And then the ramp closes instead of Kirk saying, okay, goodbye, stay here. And he walks up the ramp, the ramp closes. And then he has himself literally beamed 20 feet into the ship. Just so she can jump on him. He's, he's too good to walk up. Around. They oh were having a moment. No, he was no. Oh my God. That's so dumb. It's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever like. Just he's too good to walk up beam a ship them for him. onto the ship. Everybody walks off the pad except her. And then you beam her somewhere else. Like it's an easy fix. It's just poor writing. It's shitty writing. It is just nonsensical. And it drove me insane as I'm watching. I'm going, how did I never fucking see this before? It's dumb. It's absolutely dumb. Okay. I'm not going to defend it. I mean, it wasn't the greatest blocking <laughs> of that scene at all. No. Oh, my God. So dumb. Uh, and then, like, look, this was virtue signaling and social justice oh, warrioring. Oh, good before, God. Here before we go. Before there was virtual signaling and social justice warrioring. Like, look, I am all for, like, let's not hunt shit to extinction. Like, let's per, like be good stewards of the planet. I get like, but seriously, like this was just a fucking, the, how much did save the whales pay for this kind of fucking exposure? They didn't. I don't believe you. They didn't. This was, then, uh, this who, was, who on the this cast had a hard on for save the whales. This was conceived by, uh, Herb Bennett and I want to say Leonard Nimoy. All right. Well, yep. that, there you go. Those are the yep. two that had the hard on for fucking save the whales. But there were Probably a lot of people at that time who had a hard on for Save the Whales because the humpback whales were getting hunted into extinction. Well, they're, they're not good. now. They're good now. Yeah, well, they're, they're better. They're better. They're because fine. of because of and I'm you uh, might if say, you say the, Star the, Trek Four. I swear to fuck you I might will say find you. because of some of the efforts I, of films like Star Trek Four. I, I, I that's it. I'm on my way. I am leaving right now. Bye. Where is he going? He's coming over to like. Kick your ass? Is that what he said? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, he's 
breaking up quite a bit. So <laughs> he left. Who, who knew? Who knew? That's how we got him to leave. I'm back. Oh, shit. I decided not to come God find you right it. now because we're podcast. Because once you, this you, is over, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> be be honest. You decided not to go because that required you leaving your house. Oh yeah, yeah. Fucking that. Yeah, I've already <laughs> left the house once this this week. All right, and I'm afraid I've got the Rona. So I like, I'm not leaving for a while. And again, I'm, no. Yeah. So the humpbacks are back up to eighty thousand. So yeah, they're fine. Absolutely fine. Like now, Star Trek Four is just. Fantasy. It's not even science fiction anymore. <laughs> is is eighty thousand a, a good number for the population? I don't. I don't know. Well, considering it was at ten thousand before. Well, yeah. You I want mean, them that's, at, that's eight you want them three million. Else, you want three million humpback whales running around the ocean willy nilly doing whatever they want? No, I don't think you do. Uh, yeah, actually, I want to see humpback whales run. <laughs> <laughs> to turn a phrase, Spock. Double dumbass. Well, that's just that's yeah, just illogical. I think that this movie is is has a faulty premise. I think it has a weak, weak, weak premise at the very minimum. I think that it's preachy half the time, but the other half that it's not preachy, like it is a fun ride. It there is. Were, there were fun. two spots where you know they explained where the way or what was happening to the whales and why and how it could affect the future. That's right, it. Well, there were two no, spots. It was. It, it was, was like at 50% the aquarium. Of the movie. They were up on a soapbox. It was at the aquarium and whenever they got back to San Francisco or when they were in San Francisco Bay in the future, that was it. It felt like half the movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and can we talk about the unhealthy relationship that this seventh heaventh mom has with these whales? Uh, she seems a little obsessed. She needs to get some, a little bit. some people friends that she can talk to. Yeah. Talk but, about stalkerish. But she's their mommy. Mm. Oh my god! Mm. I mean, I can understand she's a she's a whale scientist, so this is you know something that she's devoted her life to studying. But yeah, That's slapping high your up boss on the list of scientists that you don't want to be. I'm just saying, <laughs> hey, what do you do? I'm a scientist. Oh yeah, what kind of scientist are you? I'm a whale scientist. Whale. What? What'd you say? I couldn't. Could you speak up? I said I'm a whale scientist. <laughs> well, it's not, are you really a scientist? <laughs> what kind of experiments are you doing on whales there, buddy? So really nobody passed. thought that was funny. That was fucking hilarious. I'm mm-hmm. laughing on the inside right now. I'm trying not to laugh because I'm doing a podcast. So so I hate it's you. been three months, right? <laughs> three months since Star Trek three to four. They they kind of said that. They've been in exile for about three months or so. Did they think it was a good idea to like Hey, we stole a ship and left Starfleet in one set of clothes. Maybe we should come back in the same set. <laughs> well, then they'd look like Vulcans, and nobody wants that. Yeah, well, right. Did you see what Spock was wearing? Yeah. For Christ's sake! Look, just because Spock was wearing his bathrobe with uh, balloon animal <laughs> sleeves doesn't mean that that's what everything looks like. Oh, did you see Sarek? Uh, I mean, did you yeah, see Sarek's was outfit? Wearing the same thing. Yeah, right. Sarek, so Sarek, was his mom. Sarek his wasn't leaving. Human. Yeah, yeah, only hers Sarek, was a Sarek's, little lighter, not, and more gossamery. It yeah. looked like a fucking well, then you got, a Disney princess. <laughs> well, you got Savik too. I'm not going with you, but I'm going to keep wearing my uniform. She's in Starfleet. Yeah, but well, she if she's in Starfleet, why did why did she go back? Like, why is she like that? Well, would well, you want to go back to Starfleet on a ship full of criminals? Actually, the reason why she didn't go back is originally she was supposed to have Spock's baby in her in her belly. Uh, and was that was a rumor, right. and it's been ne- it's never been confirmed. Uh, uh, well, it wasn't confirmed because after this, her career took off. <laughs> I, I guess not, you're being facetious. I a, no, I couldn't keep a straight face. Now she didn't do shit after this. Like seriously, like she's just like they're like, hey, you're replacing Kirstie Alley. She's like, sweet, my career's gonna be awesome. What am I gonna do? Like I don't know, like a movie and a half, not even a half, like a movie and a tenth, maybe not even no. a tenth, maybe like an eighteen. No, it, was, it was a movie in two minutes. <laughs> yeah, she had what four lines? Yeah, it'd be a movie in a thirtieth. Originally, she was intended to remain behind on Vulcan because she was pregnant after she had mated with the younger Spock. Yeah. Well, Which, I think, look, I think originally I think, she was supposed to be back, or the, the character Savik was supposed to be back in six. Um, as, but but her, yeah, her career didn't go anywhere, and she got into real estate. Well, look, and I don't which, think they wanted Savik to end up being a traitor to the Federation. 
Probably not uh, because they had Kim Cattrall do that, which I'm way okay with. Also, Kim Cattrall at that point was hotter than Robin Curtis. I'm just saying. Yeah, anyway, yeah, I'll give you that. Thank you. Uh, I think having Spock have a child would have changed the character probably for the better. So you saw at the end of this movie that Sarek and Spock's relationship was strained, and that was further uh, explored in a, in a Next Generation episode where Picard had to mind meld with Sarek because Sarek was old and he had this disease from mind melding too much. Uh, and so he had to mind meld to fix the mind meld disease. Yeah. Yeah. It was some kind of neurological disorder where he was like, he was feeling emotions and emotions Vulcan were coming Alzheimer's in. is what it was. Yeah. Basically Vulcan's Alzheimer's. You know, Tuvok had that too, didn't he? No. Uh, mind melding with Picard. He had something like that. I, I, look, I didn't watch. I didn't, I didn't watch. Voyager. Voyager. is too bad. Yeah. It's a dumb show. Uh, You're a dumb show. Uh, that's an accurate statement. Uh, the mind meld with Picard helped him uh, like steady himself. It gave him some, some mental strength so he could go do whatever peace treaty he was doing. But later on, it, it, you know, when, during the unification uh, uh, episodes, Picard was able to explore that with Sarah because Sarah had died. Uh, and so he was able to explore that father son relationship with Spock. And you saw it strained at the end of this movie, right? Where he was like, I, I, I believe if I recall, right, I may have, you know, said going into Starfleet was dumb. And Spock's like, hmm. But he didn't say yes, you did. He didn't say no. He just went, hmm. <laughs> and Sarek's, Sarek's like, yeah, it's possible I was wrong. Like, Sarek didn't say, yeah, I was wrong about that. Like, I'm sorry. He just went, yeah, it's possible I was wrong. I'm well, not he, saying yeah, I'm wrong. He said, you know, it's possible I was wrong. The, the people that you're hanging out with now, you know. Seem to be pretty yeah, they're good cool people. kids. Yeah, I was, cool I was probably wrong about Starfleet and, and yeah, they're friends. not they're not going around shoplifting. Right, they're not getting you high on whippets. Like they're probably good kids. Is what that that's in essence what Sarek said. So that's a, a strange relationship. So I think if Spock had a kid, I would have liked to have seen Spock be a father. Would it have been strained? Because now this kid is he going to resent him because he's a quarter human? I don't know. Like don't I want to right. I, I want to see that. I want to see that. So I wish they would have. I wish they would have done that. Uh, even if it meant, you yeah, know. but how would they do that? I mean, that that's like a series they're, that that's not the movies that, you know, they're, they're trying to, oh, let me ask you this. Would you have rather seen that or five? Uh, I would have rather seen that. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, then there you go. That's can we really just, the only answer you need. Can we just skip five and go straight no. to six? No, no. Cause I want to say, why did God need a starship? That's what I want to say. I want to say, you it just said it. <laughs> Perfect. Say it again. Well, um, I want to point out the fact that point it out. Star Trek Four mm -hmm. is the reason that we got the next generation that we got. Why is that? That's because Kirk or William Shatner wasn't going to do this movie. Or I'm sorry, no, that, that's the next movie. No, that was this movie, right? No, that's this movie. Yeah, yeah. that was this movie. Mm -hmm. William Shatner was not going to do this movie initially. Because um, he just he didn't want to come back to to Star Trek, and so they were originally going to do a movie about Starfleet Academy, but I guess uh, they finally offered Shatner enough money. Uh, I think two million. I think two and a half million. I think both two he million. and Nimoy got two and a half million, and and he got to direct the next film. That went well for him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. What does but God need with a starship? Because Whoa. they gave him two and a half million for this film as well as Nimoy, they had to decrease the budget for Star Trek The Next Generation, so they had to go with lesser-known actors, which included Patrick Stewart and William Frakes and uh, Marina Sirtis and Brent Spiner. Which it's interesting you bring that up, because in the news this week, it was reported by someone else, and I read it, that... Good job. E <laughs> Thanks. I do exactly what you do. I don't report. Uh, I read. That's fine. Uh, Sir Ian McKellen... Uh, he told Patrick Stewart, Sir Patrick Stewart, not to take the role of Picard. No shit. Yeah. He said, you don't want to, You like Star Trek is a franchise that could go one way or the other. You don't know what direction it's going to go. You're already a very well-known thespian, not lesbian, Rob, thespian. Well, like, he could be a lesbian why would you too. Want, uh, you can, uh, you, there I'm are a lesbian. lesbian thespians. thespians. I'm a I'm lesbian. Right I like they, girls. They, uh, me too. Anyway, he told him not we're to all lesbians because <laughs> I'm not future, sure you know what a lesbian is, Rob. I'm fairly confident he doesn't either. 
He's like that kid in high school. <laughs> yeah, I know what that is. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, he told him not to take it, and Patrick Stewart went ahead and took it, and so here we are. Wow, it's amazing that Patrick Stewart actually ended up in that role because Gene Roddenberry didn't want him in that role either. Oh, Roddenberry hated him. Hated him. And Patrick Stewart hated everybody. Patrick Stewart butted heads with people uh, all the time. And he, he, there was a story I think I've talked about on this podcast before where he basically, he was asking for more money because I'm a big actor. Right. And he was, it was like the end of season one, they were going into season two and he was, he was like, they were recording uh, uh, the, one of the last episodes for season one and he had a meeting with a lunch with one of the one of the producers or the bosses or whatever, and they made him that like they they set the appointment right after uh, filming stopped for lunch, and so he had to walk in his uniform, which was basically he watched the first couple of episodes of uh, the first season. You know that they're just basically pajamas, so he had to walk in his pajamas uh, through through the uh, cafeteria. There at, at uh, wherever it was, Paramount or whoever owned it at the time. Paramount. And like, yeah, and it basically, it humbled him. And at that point, he realized he's like, they can do whatever they want. So if I want to keep doing this, I'm going to have to play ball. Right. So Patrick Stewart a couple of times may not have been uh, Captain Picard, but I'm glad that he is. Uh, and I'm glad he didn't, you know, he wasn't in Star Trek Five. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so... <laughs> Spock is back on the ship and back into engineering, teaching Scotty how to do shit. <laughs> that's not, that's not, that's not necessarily accurate. What are you all. talking about? It's not necessarily accurate. He was the one showing <laughs> Scotty how to fucking recrystallize the dilithium crystals. Maybe, but Scotty knew how no, to make transparent maybe. aluminum. Which is you weird know. because, because in Discovery, they already figured that out. Or a race has figured that out on the uh, what? What? dilithium crystals. How to reconstitute Ooh. dilithium crystals in Discovery. Another alien race has figured it out. Man, you guys suck. Move on. Yeah, but this was before that. I don't give a fuck what Discovery tries to retcon. Mm. Okay. It's because Discovery is a shit show. Moving on. You're a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> Rob gets so like defensive. A- this might be the best episode we've ever done, guys. It is. It's the best Star Trek we've had. Um, uh, no, it's got, it's, this is going to be number one for everybody after we redo our uh, ranking system. Scotty, the only thing he's done is make a fucking aquarium in a ship. Okay, well, have you ever tried to make a saltwater aquarium? It kind of sucks. No, he, he I haven't. Did it. Yeah, it's not, it's not the easiest process in the world. And not only that, he did it like... Without Spock, you're right. That that is an achievement for Scotty. That is exactly right. And what he knew about transparent aluminum. So so the dude that basically they're six inch pieces of plastic, right? Six inch thick, right? Right. It's plexiglass, right. yeah. Plexiglass, yeah. Um, they are sliding it into these bulkheads. Well, no, they, or they were sliding in transparent aluminum. That's the whole reason no, Scotty gave no, him. No, 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 no,
you know, there was light, welding light, like spark type stuff. Yeah. What was he welding? Probably brackets for the plexiglass. Yeah. yeah. Duh. So? yeah. yeah. Okay. What did Securing you think it was? Because right? you- if you notice those plexiglass uh, windows had did big you- holes in the tops and bottoms <laughs> for support. That's Is how that you locked them into place. Is okay. Him- him welding plexiglass, you're like, why is he welding plexiglass? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, I was. It was <laughs> Although a it confused. would make sense if it was transparent aluminum. If, if is that wait out of all the shit that's wrong in this movie, that's what you that's oh no what you honed in on. Okay, no, 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 no. The other thing that I honed in was that it was very convenient yet again that uh, there were cameras out in space to capture the <laughs> Enterprise blowing up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's very you know, convenient. The sensors, you, are, you know, the sensors have a direct clean on. Well, and it always seems to be when Klingons are are involved, right? So, so oh my we, god, can we talk about the Klingon at the beginning of the movie? Well, dude, he a was, giant douche nozzle. Oh, I yeah, denied yeah. nothing. <laughs> what? Okay, great. Then why are you here? Why are you here again? Buddy? Oh, I love how Sarek just dressed him down. Oh yeah, but Sarek does it such like he's the he is the atypical Vulcan. Like he will. It's all logic, and it's supposed to be dispassionate. But oh my god, I, he just talks down to everybody. Oh, I know. I know. He just comes in. Yeah, yeah. Cling on justice. Mm-hmm. That's a. Mm, it's that, rich. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he said that's what he said. That was the uh, Vulcan equivalent of <laughs> that's rich. <laughs> so that gives you uh, that gives Klingons the the right to murder. Just right the fuck out there. You guys yeah. started all this shit, and you're you're wanting reparations. Thanks. No, that's not how this works. Yeah, uh, that was uh, that that was one of my favorite scenes of the movie. I liked how like so again. I was with Admiral Cartwright, Cisco's dad. I love how Star Trek reuses actors. <laughs> love it. I really do. I don't mind it. I think it's great. Um, but he, Cisco's dad in DS Nine, because I kept yeah. waiting for Admiral Cartwright to be like, "You want some gumbo?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was that was later. Yeah, uh, they. I liked how they did the whole. They went back to the same moment that they left, and how that was shot and put together. Because the first time when they left, you just kind of saw Sarek staring out out the window that had just busted. Right, right. There at Starfleet headquarters, he's just staring out right. the window. Yeah. And then they come back, and the scene is the exact same. And then all of a sudden, he's staring out the window, and he's like, "Look there." Thanks. <laughs> like we, <laughs> did we need Sarek to herald the arrival of a fucking Klingon bird of prey over the bay during a giant storm? Did we need that? No, we didn't. But we got it. And it was fantastic. And those poor maintenance workers, man, they just, you know, they had a 50-50 chance of picking the right window to secure. <laughs> yeah, they, they yeah. picked the wrong fucking one. The other one blew <laughs> in. You know, they're going to get chewed out the for process. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, Apparently the that wasn't transparent aluminum. No, that wasn't. That was plexiglass. It <laughs> just wasn't <laughs> thick enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think so, my favorite part of the movie is when they're fumble fucking around San Francisco. All of them. Like, uh, like from Ahura and Chekhov asking a cop where oh the nuclear God, vessels that are. That was one of my favorite scenes was Ahura and Chekhov fucking asking where they could find the nuclear <laughs> vessels. Can you imagine like, a dude with a Russian fucking about? accent in 1986 asking people <laughs> at San Francisco where the fucking nuclear vessels was? I would be just like that fucking cop going, either I'm getting punked or this dude is the dumbest fucking Russian agent ever. <laughs> Uh, they, there was punked back then. There was no punked. Well, candy was there camera, candy whatever. Camera. Uh, there you whatever, go, yeah. candy camera. The modern day millennials punks. are going. What's a what's a what's a candid camera? I don't know. I don't know what that is. See, I'm candy trying to uh, I'm trying to relate to the kids. Is that what you're doing? No. Ashton Kutcher wasn't even a gleam in his daddy's eye in eighty eighty six. Was he not? How in eighty six? Yeah. How old is Ashton Kutcher? Uh, I don't know. Isn't he younger? He's got to be younger than us. Aston Kutcher. He was uh, born in 1978. 42. Holy shit. Yeah. Damn. I think you're back, right. Ashton. You're right. He isn't a glean. He has he done is. real. Yeah. He's yeah. No, he was born. Might've been a tear in his dad's eye at that point. Who knows? <laughs> Most definitely. Well, he's from, he's from the town I live in. Cedar yeah. Rapids. Yeah. Corn capital of the world? That's not the corn capital of the world, asshole. 
Oh, that's your backyard. I hate you so much, Rob. <laughs> I really do. I really do. Anyway, they're all fumble fucking around. It's great. The scene on the on the uh, on the bus where he he does the Vulcan nerve pinch on the the punk rocker who won't turn the boombox down. Yeah. Boombox uh, millennials. A boombox was something that you was it was large. It had two large speakers on it. Typically a cassette player. In some instances, a record player. <laughs> weighed about twenty five fucking pounds, and half of that was in D batteries. Yeah, mm-hmm. D batteries. They just weren't for dildos back then. And you would put it on your shoulder. And you turn it up really, really loud and annoy the shit out of everybody in about a one mile radius. Yep. Yeah, that's what a boombox was. And he was playing punk rock music, shitty punk rock music at that. It wasn't even good punk rock music. Well, it's because they they made it specifically for this film. He was the the guy that was playing the punk actually helped write that punk music. Yeah, he was the he was one of the uh, assistant producers. Yeah. Yeah, it was like the name of the song was Screw You. Like, Which is a very you know punk, punk title. I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah. It was just, and then he flipped them off. Uh, then everybody on the bus clapped, including uh, Admiral Kirk. Clapped. Well, he was trying to blend in. Is that what it was? Well, none mm-hmm. of them blended in very well. No, not at all. Uh, I, the, and then the other great moment in this movie is when uh, Bones gives the dialysis patient. Oh, yes. Two pills. He's like, what is this? The Middle Ages? <laughs> fucking yeah, swallow these call me in the morning and Dr. he walks me away a noodle kidney Dr. I me. Got me kidney. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic when he's arguing with the surgeon over checkoff uh yeah it was that, that's good that's that, that was that was the the height of this movie for me this is a goddamn spanish inquisition was, yeah <laughs> Oh my god, it's so good! Like there's so much swearing in this movie, and you don't typically see that in Star Trek movies. In fact, it was like a big thing in Generations when uh, Brent Spiner, as Data, said "shit." Oh yeah, I know. Right. Well, so I you mean, don't typically see think that. about all the but people were... that lost their shit when Picard came out. Right. Oh my god! Like when the when the Admiral told him to, you know, the fucking what, sheer the fucking, fucking hubris. hubris. Yeah. Sheer fucking hubris. Yeah, like people lost their lost their fucking minds. But this movie, there were at least two goddams. At least two. Oh yeah. There lots was of hells. two uh double damn dumbass. Yeah, 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 there was dumbass, there was double dumbass. Mm-hmm. There was lots of hells. <laughs> Spock tried to swear is kind of funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I this movie is definitely one of those ones where they were just like, let's have fun, but let's also try to be conscious of, of what's around us. Uh, if they would have just done away with the, let's be conscious of what's around us. Uh, they would have done away with that part and been like, fuck it. Let's just have a fun ride in the past and let's not recycle the motion picture premise. This movie would probably be one of my favorites, but unfortunately uh, they did all of the things that they shouldn't do in a movie uh, uh, and it, it suffered because of it. So Jan walked in on me while I was watching this. She tends to that do that. What she walked in on you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she says, she walks in and I'm like, what the hell are you watching this time? But so she walks in when, uh, Spock and her mom or Spock and his mom, sorry, Spock and his mom are talking and she goes, she says, who's that? And I said, Oh, that's Spock's mom. He goes, She's as old as Spock. <laughs> so so that made me look, because then I started questioning. I'm like, you know, they do. They look the same age. So I, I looked it up. Jane Wyatt, uh, who plays the mom, uh, at the time of filming, was 76 years old. Spock is 55. Leonard Nimoy is 55. He looks terrible at 55. <laughs> It's all the LDS he did. LDS, yeah. yes. All the LDS, All those yes. Latter-day right. Saints that he did. <laughs> yeah. Which I thought but, was hilarious. That's just foreshadowing in real life for Seventh Heaven. <laughs> That's yeah. all that is. It's foreshadowing oh, in real life for funny. Seventh Heaven. That's funny. I love Chekhov whenever he gave himself the uh, the promotion. That was fun. Admiral. Right? Admiral. Admiral. <laughs> Like I said, there's so many good, fun moments in this movie. Like the best guess thing. Like take your, just like McCoy's telling Spock, just guess. 
And he's like, uh, what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. I don't know to, right. And then he tells Kirk, I, I'm just going to guess. And he's like, what? You? Amazing. Yes. That's extraordinary, That's Spock. And then he turns around <laughs> and walks out. And Spock goes, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> and Bones is like, he's saying your best guess is better than most people's facts. So it was a compliment. Yes, you idiot. <laughs> and, duh. And then the whole conversation between Bones and Spock about death was fantastic, too. Bones is like, what's death about? Tell me about death. And he's like, well, there's you don't have a frame of reference for it. So the conversation would be futile. Yeah. So I got to die <laughs> like, in order to talk to you about death. What the fuck, <laughs> man? It's so good. I, I love those interactions. Again, you get off your soapbox and just tell a story. It's great. Like, you can have those elements. Fuck, don't it's like get rid of the megaphone. Just tell me about it. You're too sensitive, Go on with the fucking man. movie. I'm not You're sensitive. You're so it's fucking just, sensitive. sensitive. <sighs> so sensitive. I hate you both. <laughs> so bad. I really do. I hate you both so much. Oh, was it just me or did anybody else notice the disappointment in Kirk whenever the whale doctor left for her ship <laughs> yeah. and he didn't get yeah. to and he didn't get to nail her yet? He's like, wait a minute. Wait, I brought you back from Did the past. Did you not read the script? Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm Kirk. supposed to fuck you. Like, yeah. my penis goes inside of you. Which, which like, is. Bah. Yeah, which is kind of <laughs> interesting because they were eyeing Eddie Murphy for that role. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Originally, Eddie Murphy was supposed to be the scientist. Yeah. That would have been fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> I would have rather had Eddie Murphy than uh, oh, Seventh Heaven. Oh no, no, no! Yes, and then I'd still want Kirk to hit on him. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> okay, maybe. see, there it is. Because inevitably, you know, Eddie Murphy's going to say it. He's going to say, "You know, once you go black, you never go back." <laughs> like you know, that's going to be. I just, I would like that in Star Trek canon. Well, he can. Uh, he could have uh, cracked out that character that he did in Beverly Hills Cop Two. Oh, what did, he, what did he? Axel Foley? Huh? What's his, was, was his name? No, no, no Axel Foley? it was Axel Foley the playing the like that interior decorator to get inside that bank, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Yeah, I have no desire to watch it again. The Beverly Hills Cop this, series was good. Yeah, I, it was. Yeah, it was all right. I, it was funny for sure. Do you think this movie stands up? Not to change the subject, because uh, whatever. You think this movie stands up? I think it does. I mean, they I said the word it. retard. They like Rob was in the movie because he's like, yeah, he's a Ruski, but he's retarded or something. <laughs> I think it does. I mean, I watched it remastered and it still looked really good. I thought the special effects in this movie were better than the last one. Um, yeah, I would agree. The, the I mean, there weren't a ton of special effects because most of them, most of the movie took place in, in modern day or 1986 Earth. Um, and most of the effects were practical, but I still think they, they look pretty good. Even the, even the space scenes. <laughs> I don't know. I think millennials are going to be lost on a lot of things. If they go to watch this, like, you know, yellow pages. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah. That was a, that was a joke that may not, may not stand the test of time, but it's such a good joke. It like, is. You and I get it. We get it. I was sitting there going, Oh my God, that's fucking hilarious. Like there's this big thing. that's like, fuck it. If you need to find it, yellow pages. Yeah. <laughs> And then they cut to a horror and check off and they're already, they're closing the phone book. <laughs> right. Uh, it's so I don't bad. know it's, if you didn't know about the cold war, um, how well the Ahura and check off on the street scene would play or yeah. check off being captured on the enterprise. That wasn't the enterprise, how that would have played. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, so there's some stuff that, you know, may not stand the test of time, but I think the jokes for the most part in the movie as a whole uh, stands up. Kirk cannot hold a box of pizza correctly. Oh, I know that fucking, I was like all the fucking toppings and cheese are going to slide <sighs> off onto the fucking. I was box. Maybe, so maybe that angry. was the point. Maybe that was the point, you know, to, I well, is you he know. doing Atkins and he just can have the cheese and toppings? Well, no, I was, I was thinking to show that he's, you know, 
uh, fish out of water, you know, man out of his time. Yeah, that's because, true. Because at first they had, you know. Yeah, they, but surely they. Do they or wait, do they not holding, like Italian? Wait, 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 we don't know which. That people from the future can't figure out how the fuck to hold food? Well, Is that what you're telling me? Not only that, but people in the future don't eat pizza anymore. That's not a future Maybe, I want to well, live in. Well, they, they couldn't right. decide whether or not they liked Italian. Well, wait, wait, wait. Remember the original series? They ate little <laughs> foam fucking squares and circles and shit that came out of a microwave do you not remember that they were like Rep- green replicated. and red yeah i remember that but yeah. i mean i figured that was just ship food I, maybe i don't know well I, I don't know what they eat on earth they don't have money anymore so maybe they don't have food they have some maybe kind of currency just- because bones was gonna pay for passage in three to genesis but kirk said we don't have money in four they said they don't have currency. No, she said, let me guess. You guys don't have money in the future. And then the waiter looked at him and he looked at the waiter and goes, but we don't. Yeah. And whenever they first arrived in San Francisco before they split up, he said they still use currency here. So we need to find yeah, some. They, That's when he sold his, his glasses. Right. So why did like who takes credit? Ferengi? Yeah. Cold, uh, gold pressed latinum. Gold pressed latinum. Yeah. Because gold is not valuable in the universe or at least the galaxy. And I guess you have to press latinum with gold. I don't what I don't latinum is more rare than than gold. Yay? Yeah. So they they just encase the latinum in gold. I don't know, it's fucking DS9, not the greatest show either. <laughs> <laughs> like it's 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 a it's just barely better than than Voyager. Yeah, I don't I don't know. The, the, I mean they they there's places in the future that obviously have currency. But not Earth. But not necessarily the Federation, no. So I guess if, no. you, if you need something through Federation channels, you don't have to necessarily pay for it. If you want to get something that are, that's outside of Federation channels, you have to have some sort of credit. Look, if there's not money in the future, in the Federation, why, why are there guys... Why are there guys that have to hold the windows up? Maybe that's what they want to do. Everybody is a contributing member to society all the way Rob, from you would be the fucked admiral in the future then. all the way down to the lowly garbage man. You would be fucked in the future. Great. I want to get future fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I meant, but okay. <laughs> I suppose I too would like to get fucked in the future. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Final thoughts. Mm, I I still, I still stand by my number by your number. Yeah. Of ranking. Oh, well, yeah, we'll get to that later. Well, great. But you can't look at your previous ranking and do the same thing. No, you can't. I can because it's on my screen right here with (laughs) where I put my show notes because you told me to write down notes. So I recorded them. Oh, also real quick, Uh, real quick, because this, I I remembered this now and this bothered the shit out of me at the beginning of the movie and close to the beginning of the movie. uh, Savick says to Kirk, I didn't get a chance to tell you this, but your son gave his life for myself and Spock and he died admirably. Which is almost verbatim the same thing she said to him in Star Trek 3. When she told him that your son is dead, he died saving myself and Spock. We were getting a recap. It's like <laughs> uh, previously like well, previously but, on Star Trek. Right, but the then why did she Spock. say I didn't get a chance to tell you when she obviously was the one who told Look, him? It was a recap. It was a recap. Like, if you don't remember, Doc Brown took your kid captive along mm-hmm. with myself and Spock. You know, they can only reuse footage from a previous movie so much. <laughs> well, that's not true because they used uh, they used uh, special effects, uh, movie special effects from the Star Trek movies in The Next Generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in other movies, too. Yeah, like they just recycle that shit. Well, yes, but... Like that whole you know, Genesis I, sequence, I think they've played in three different fucking movies <laughs> three now. Three different movies now, right? Uh. Uh, we're going to save so much production value by just reusing the same thing. They used that in a video game, too. What video game? I can't remember. Look, we found Spock. <laughs> <laughs> the video game. The video game. Uh, it'd probably be better than E.T., the video game. 
anything is better was, than that. What shit was that? Show. Just uh, driving around in a bike? No, it was no, just you never played ET the video game. ET around with his goddamn stupid neck on blank screens. It sucked. Balls. Yeah, like somebody was literally given like six weeks to come up with an ET video game for Atari, and they did, and it was shit. It was so shit that there was a landfill in Arizona, I think, New Mexico. That was just Mexico. There you go. That was filled with with the unsold ET games. And now they're worth a small fortune. Yeah, they buried them. They dug them up yeah. not too long ago. Yeah, they dug them up because people wanted them. I don't know why. Nobody wants to play it. It's a shit game. But there was a whole documentary on it. So, yeah. Jeez, Man, Rob, go, where have you been? Right. Gee, fucking Rob. All right, James, question for you. Yes, sir. Is Star Trek for the Voyage Home more sci-fi than 11 They cured kidney dialysis. I don't even know what that is, but they cured it with a pill and not dialysis. So I don't think kidney dialysis is an actual disease. Well, it's kidney disease, some sort of kidney disease that she was getting dialysis for. Yeah, that they did that. There was lasers. There was a cloaked ship. Uh, there were <laughs> intelligent whales because that's, that's just not a fucking thing. Uh, there were space dildos. Uh, and, and, uh, there were, there were aliens. Uh, so yes. So you're saying uh, no, Star Trek four, it's Star Trek four is more sci-fi. Really? Than 11, 22, 63. Yes. I would have, I would have thought uh, you would have gone the other way, but <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. Don't be silly. All right, Rob, you got a haiku for us this week. I do. This one is titled Got Whales. <laughs> <laughs> Giant space dildo. No whales to answer the phone. Two words. Time travel. God. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't have a bigger boner for this movie. I know. Well, the 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 space dildo had the, you know, enough boner for everybody. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean, yeah. It was a there long be whales shaft. here. Yeah. There well, be, be dildos here too. Arr. Well, isn't that like a thing from the? Like, I, I don't know. What was the HMS Bounty? Was that from uh, uh, Moby Dick? Bro- I don't know. I don't. I don't HMS, read. No, the Bounty wasn't. No, that was just that was just a call back to uh, English Pirates of the Caribbean. English <laughs> English ships. English ships. No, they talked about pirates and shit. Uh, HMS Bounty was a small merchant merchant vessel that the Royal Navy purchased. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was a quick research on the fly. Um, that wasn't even research how, on the fly there, Micro. The, like, you don't have to. Uh, uh, an American uh, adventure it was, uh, rediscovered it in 1957. It was a merchant vessel the Royal Navy purchased for a botanical mission to the West Indies. The mission was never completed owing to a mutiny led by acting Lieutenant Fletcher Christian. Uh, it's popularly known as mutiny on the bounty. So it was a, right. it was a right. ship so that was, that was, this is why, look, this is why when, when Jason does research on the fly, you hear a thunk. <laughs> and when you do research on the fly, we should just hear giggles. Well, you hear them go. Blah, 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 blah. I know, yeah. but it, just, it should just be like, it should just be like women going, he, 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 micro dick. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rob. <laughs> oh, but we'll see you really next week. <laughs> That's all we got time for today. Our intro and outro music is "Welcome Home" by Machet. Pod crawl music. No, is we're going to discuss what we're going to talk next week. So next oh, week next we're going to continue to get sauced as we yeah. we uh, watch. Star Trek Six, The Undiscovered no, Country, no, because we are no. skipping the other one. Why does God need a starship? Because, I have to know. Because he was Next trying to week, get away from Crowley. We continue the summer of Star <laughs> Trek as we watch Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, 1989's movie where Captain Kirk and his crew must deal with Mr. Spock's long-lost half-brother who hijacks the Enterprise for an obsessive search for God at the center of the galaxy. 
This one's directed by Will Shatner himself. Woohoo! He's got some story credit on this too, which is disappointing because <laughs> I figured he would have a better imagination than this. <laughs> no, oh, please. <laughs> And it stars all your favorites, William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, DeForest Kelly, uh, James Doohan, uh, Nichelle Nichols, you know, all those people. Walter Koenig, <laughs> George Takai. George Takai. It, it's a bunch of people. Oh, my. Oh, my. Uh, That's the some first guy named, oh, my's we've done since doing this. I know. Which well, because he's not well. in it very often. Yeah, he hasn't I, gotten a ton of screen time, has he? Mm-mm. Did he say "Oh my" when they when they first saw the uh, Excelsior? Did he go "Oh my"? No, I don't think so. Yeah, he should have. That's a missed he opportunity. Should've. Yeah, interesting. So next week we're going to do Star Trek Five. It's uh, by far, I think, the weakest <laughs> Star the Trek or one movie. of the weakest Star Treks. Um, just maybe. movie in general, just worst movie possibly ever. It, it well, may I rival still think it's slightly better Masters than Insurrection. Slightly You're better insane. than Insurrection, but we'll find Insurrection's out. Insurrection's not good. Like, by any stretch of the imagination. But, but, yeah, this is... I don't know, man. What does God mean with the Star Trek? Our intro and outro music is Welcome Home by Cambo. Pod crawl music is Snack Mix by Machette. If you like the show, please rate and review us on iTunes. You can leave us feedback on our Discord channel at smokinganddrinkinginspace.com forward slash Discord. On Twitter at status underscore podcast, or you can email us at smoking and drinking in space at outlook.com. If you'd like to throw a few nickels our way, you can become a Patreon supporter by going to smoking and drinking in space.com forward slash Patreon. Be sure to visit Creative Brain Candy for more great shows and other creative works at creativebraincandy.com. For this week, I've been Jason. Double dumbass on you, sir. <laughs> And we'll talk to you next week.